Hello guys. So it's been a while since I last did a video. I've been busy with other projects as well as being kind of unmotivated. I wanted some time just to create artwork just for me and not for the YouTube channel. And I think going forward with this YouTube channel, it's going to be whenever I feel like posting a video. I wanted to get back to a schedule, but it just never happened. And since I've been taking time to do artwork for myself, I also decided to step into digital art again. Now I do use my digital art software to uh, fix traditional sketches, do touch-ups here and there, but I don't fully do digital artwork much anymore. And I really wanted to get back into it. So I thought I would do some fan art for one of my favorite YouTubers, Mira Ray. Now she has a storytelling series here on YouTube using The Sims 4. She tells the stories of her royal characters and it's so much fun to follow. This thing is like a TV show. It is so binge worthy. I will leave a link to it down below in the description. I recommend you checking out the season one recap and then going from season two onwards because oh my god, it is all so good. <laughs> So the characters I decided to draw were actually from her main storyline currently. So it's her Alice May storyline. And in the storyline, there are eight main teens. And there is currently an event going on called the Debutante Ball, which is a coming of age ball for royal and noble teens. And they all look so good in their Debutante Ball outfits that I just had to draw them. Just all of them. I love all of them. <laughs> the characters in question are Alice May, Kaleo, Caspian, Molly Grace, Frederick, Jessica, William, and Nani. So originally I wasn't even going to record any of these speed paints. I was mainly just doing these to actually find a rhythm and get a flow back for digital artwork since I hadn't done it in a really long time. I also just wanted to find a technique that was just simple enough to replicate and also just to continue with and improve upon over time. This was because I have been really wanting to start digital commissions and I thought this series of fan art drawings would just be the perfect way to try out different sort of styles. And that's why some of these pictures actually look different from each other. And I think from the fourth or fifth character onwards, they actually start to take up a sort of style, which I was happy with and just continued with. Now, if you're anything like me, normally my natural reaction would be consistency over anything. And this series of fan art drawings doesn't really have much in the way of consistency, especially for the first four drawings. This is because I mentally said to myself, don't pressure yourself and give yourself time to develop a style over these eight pictures. Each drawing will come out as they do. And with every drawing that comes out, just try and improve upon what you like from the last drawing that you did. And this was really helpful for me. By the time I got to the character of Frederick, I was so happy with how all of the characters looked. And I just felt my confidence with digital art just grow even further. Because usually when I haven't done digital art in a really long time, I kind of stress myself out with, oh my God, this has got to be just like the last time I did digital artwork when I was at the top of my game, but it never works out that way. <laughs> So in the video right now, you're actually seeing the character of Kaleo being drawn. Now, Kaleo is a very polarizing character. He's not very likable um, in the series. I'm not gonna try and spoil it for you guys who actually want to go watch the series for yourself. But Alice May's story touches upon her mental health as well as being a bit of a slow burn romance at the same time. But Kaleo as a character is very bratty and self-centered. So I really hope that my drawing actually makes him look like that. So very spoilt rotten, essentially. When illustrating characters, I like to look for uh, visual cues that kind of relate to the character. And in this instance, Kaleo's eyes are kind of like snake eyes. They're very, very vivid green. It's almost like an acid green. <laughs> like his stare could burn you alive. With Alice May, it was more so about the jewelry since she is the crown princess of Windenburg, but I really wanted that soft, subtle face. She's very cute 
and she's actually quite short compared to all of the teens as well. So even though it's just a bush shot of the character, I really wanted to give off the impression of their heights as well. So I hope it comes across. Something that's also really interesting is how I went about doing these pieces of fan art. Now I actually took them in groups of two. Since there was eight of them, I did four rounds of two characters each. This was a good way to split up my time and actually just made it more enjoyable to do. And on average, I did about three to four hours for each headshot. Now, obviously in the beginning, it took a lot longer because I was adding all the little details. I was also experimenting with my style and trying to get a grip on what I wanted. But once I'd figured out a rhythm, obviously it took a little less time. Now we're on to the character of Caspian. Now this character actually belongs to Arnie Sims and was actually put into Mirror Ray series. And technically he's not actually a royal, but he is the son of Windenburg's royal advisor. So it kind of makes him part of the club, I suppose. Now with Caspian's picture, it was actually the first one I actually considered doing a background for, and it's a very primitive version of the backgrounds that I would eventually go to. I think Caspian's picture was definitely a transitional phase in my digital work. Something to note about the reference images that I took from the first episode of the Debutante Ball for references of the characters is that the episode actually has the ballroom as this beautiful romantic-esque lighting. So it's kind of dark and more uh, reddish pink purple kind of thing. So it kind of made the skin tones look a bit more pink than uh, I was originally wanting them to look. But I thought that all of them had a cohesiveness to them, especially with all of those undertones. But this was also good because it gave me an idea of doing different skin tones, especially in different lighting. Now, while I was doing Caspian, I was kind of questioning it because uh, his skin tone was kind of blowing out and dulling every other colour around it. Even my uh, muted grey background colour that's supposed to be like a muted grey brown. And it definitely had me stressing for a little bit because I really did think that the saturation of Caspian's skin tone was just so bright that I didn't think it would work out. But it's because I hadn't finished the rest of the colouring. <laughs> and it actually turned out okay once all of the other colouring was done. Another thing that made me nervous when doing Caspian was the eye bags. Just, I knew that Caspian had very prominent uh, eye bags and the way his eyes were actually shaped. So that was definitely nerve wracking for me because every time I've tried to do eye bags in the past, especially with digital painting, they've always made the character look way older than they were supposed to be. These are supposed to be teens, not looking like they're going into the old folks home. The next character on the list was Molly Grace. Now she is the younger of the two uh, Brindleton Bay siblings and their main colour is red. So each kingdom in Mirror Ray series actually has a specific colour. A little detail that I thought I would add, I didn't want to do it exactly the way the Sims series actually depicts the dresses because a lot of these are actually made by other people because they're CC, they're custom content. So for Molly Grace's dress, what I decided to do was take uh, the decals and actually make it into a little heart with a little swirl at the end. So it's kind of like an M connected to a G, so Molly Grace. Molly Grace is very sassy and she's also a very supportive friend. She's Alice May's closest friend, I think, or at least that's how I see her. On Molly Grace's picture, this is where I actually started to play around with the line work colour. So I thought that the original line work colour that I was going for was just a little bit too light, especially with the eyes. So to make the eyes stand out, I actually coloured the lines in black and it just made the eyes pop so much more. Now Molly Grace's picture was also where I started to play around with the background as well. So starting to add more glittery effects, just making it more fun for myself because I always love a bit of sparkle in all of my pieces, even traditional pieces. The next character is Frederick. Now I've been mentioning that Frederick is probably the piece that I love the most. It's like all the stars aligned for this piece. 
just Frederick looks so cute, the lines aren't too harsh or too soft, it's like this perfect balance. And when I'd finished Frederick's piece, it was one of those where I was so happy with it, I mentally said, that's my commission style, that's what I want for every piece. It was like a pure eureka moment. As for Frederick the character, I love him. He is just so soft and sensitive, it's so so sweet. And what he was put through with the debutante ball, he needs a vacation. Because <laughs> there was so much drama. It's probably just me, but I think that Frederick, out of all the illustrations, just has the best colour palette. I really, really love his colour palette. Then again, Nani has a pretty good colour palette as well. Okay, they tie. But the background colour was actually determined by what colour would contrast or make the character pop the most. Or sometimes what kind of colour would go with the character in general. So in terms of Molly Grace, she was wearing red, so I kind of went with this mint green because complementary colours. Caspian got blue because of like the waves from Sulani. At least from what Ray and Anya have said, he likes surfing. And in the series, he did some snorkeling. Alice May and Kaleo didn't get background colours, mainly because it was before I decided to start adding background colour splashes. Nani's backsplash colour was to complement her dress, so a vivid orange. And William, William went with purpley magenta, mainly because that's actually Windenberg's colours. I can tell by looking at the rest of the sped up footage that the other pieces left to do actually didn't take me as long as the first five pieces because once I'd found a style which I was like, yes, I like this, it kind of came naturally just to speed up the process of the other three that were left over. However, when I finally got on to William and Nani, during those two pieces, while I was doing William in particular, I definitely experienced what Jenna Marbles would have called the too much gene. And because I'm an Aries as well, oh my god, that's that's a lot. Too much gene and Ariesness. I have an eye for detail, but sometimes I just do not know when to stop and sometimes over render things. And I feel like with William in particular, his piece was a little bit over rendered. I completely just skipped over Jessica. I am so sorry, Jessica. But Jessica's piece was actually coloured in before Frederick's, but Frederick's was posted first, if that makes sense. So basically, Frederick was the sixth one coloured, but the fifth one posted if that makes any sense. It's because on my Instagram, I kind of wanted to also post it in a way where it was like, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, and not have it be odd. I'm a perfectionist, it's who I am. <laughs> and as of recording this video, I've just uploaded an Etsy listing for my digital commissions. If you're interested in any of my digital art and would like something custom, then that is the place to go and I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. If digital art is not your thing, then I also have traditional art commissions available and they are done in watercolour or ink. It has been a goal for me to actually get commissions up and started, so having both options for digital and traditional commissions is like the biggest goal for me and I've done it. As of recording this video, I have actually received a commission, so I just want to thank you for the support. The commissions actually support me a lot more than this YouTube channel does. And also, you get something custom and personal, so if you've ever ordered a commission from me, I want to thank you so, so much. So William's illustration, I feel like I did overdo it, as I said earlier, but I felt like this was one of the times where the line art kind of ruined it because I really love the sketch of William. I don't think this is just a me issue, this is just something that happens naturally, especially when you're fine tuning a piece of artwork to be more rendered. You can sometimes lose the essence of what made the original sketch so nice. And I still like the final result of William, it's just I did prefer the sketch personally, but the final image didn't turn out too badly either. I actually still really like it. Doing these bus shots was actually pretty fun because halfway through the blending process, it just looks like a complete messy makeup tutorial and especially with the boys with their lips because obviously I have to put their lip colour, but it just looks like really terrible lipstick. 
The halfway point before I've blended anything is comedy gold. I love it. <laughs> and it's just such a visual difference. It's so, so funny to me. Then the last illustration of the set was Nani. Now, Nani, I loved her dress. Like, in the series, her dress was a pure showstopper. She looked stunning. Out of all the characters, I think Nani surprised me the most. That colour looked amazing on her and the way she did her hair as well. I love drawing curly hair because me and overdoing details is like having tea with milk. It's a perfect match. And even though she's only a lady in title, I really wanted to add a little bit more detail because where I decided to draw was below the reference picture. So I decided to take a little bit of creative liberty and add more sparkle because, you know, me and overdoing details and adding extra sparkle. That is just my style. <laughs> But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. This video wasn't really something that I was planning to do. It was just something that evolved as I was doing the pieces of fan art. I mainly used filming the illustrations to actually time how long each of the illustrations would be so I could kind of estimate prices for my commissions. It was mainly for that purpose rather than actually creating a YouTube video. But since I already had the footage, I thought, why not? But yeah, I'll see you in my next video of whatever I decide to put on the YouTube channel. Bye guys.